Okay, this is going to be kind of hard to see here. But what I'm trying to show is the dark blue shadow down below. That's the liquid refrigerant and oil at the bottom of the condenser here. And uh, that's the cold. Unfortunately, it's only 63 degrees outside right now. If it was warmer, it would be more of an extravagant difference. But it's saying it's 57, 56 degrees, 55, 54, which is wrong. That temperature down there is approaching 30 degrees, actually. But because of the shiny aluminum, it gives you, it's giving a false lean, taking an average. You can kind of see a, a dark blue line there, which is the refrigerant line with the refrigerant. When I touch it with my finger, I can feel it's really cold. And of course, you cannot do, I mean, even if I press the laser so you could see exactly where I'm hitting and taking the temperature, the temperature does not correlate with what it actually is. I would have to go in and, and play with the emissivity reading settings on here to try to get at least closer to reality. And I don't think I could get a straight shot to the compressor on here to show you. I put my hand down below and touch the compressor. The bottom of the case of that compressor is icy cold. But I don't think I can actually, well, yeah, I can. It will show it. There you go. That dark blue, that's the compressor. Now, it's not showing the right thing. It's actually colder than 50 degrees or 47 degrees. 45 degrees, you're getting closer. But uh, it's around 38 degrees. That compressor is near freezing because of all the refrigerant being sucked out because of the low pressure. I'm down to minus 26 PSI on the pressure right now. Now I could get a real, see this is a black rubber hose. Black is great for attempting, let's see my laser. And the temperature outside is 63 degrees. The temperature of that rubber hose is 63 degrees. Now let's go to this silver one. Let me get the laser on it. There's the laser. My middle. I'm not 76 degrees or 78 degrees and this has been sitting out in the lot with the engine not running and I just came here this morning and um, it's not that hot so that's the difference between shiny metal and dark flat black makes a big difference if you're using those temperature gauges with the little laser on it, they're just temperature only no camera you get the wrong readings when you switch from black to shiny silver. I'm trying to get this point across this week, so you might see a few vi videos on this. Uh, I should have dug out my old non-contact laser temperature, you know, uh, sensors uh, to show you how inaccurate they are. They'll give you a reference. They'll give you some point of change. They will show you something is happening. But if you're going for accuracy, they are not accurate on shiny bright metals, especially rounded items. Or if you have a heat source, like a hot valve cover right here or exhaust manifold, anything like that. When you try to take a picture with a camera or a thermal uh, temperature gauge, you will get the reflective temperature from this item six inches away, will hit the shiny rounded product. And if it's at the right angle, will reflect that heat back up into the sensor of your temperature sensor or your temperature camera and it will give you the wrong reading. This is something my dad taught me before high school. Uh, show me the differences and he ran me through a bunch of tests showing me because he had all the you have the contact type thermocouplers that you can actually attach to and put some insulation around it and then tie it right to your device with a contact thermometer that gives you a true reading. And then you try to use your thermal gun and then you see how far off you are and you do that on different temperatures this is something my dad had me do as a child actually taking physical temperature using thermal couplers watching it and then using non-contact infrared taking temperatures to show me the difference on different colors of how wrong the information you get from this tool that 
information, the data you get from your equipment is only as good as the technician. Not as only as good as the tool is. The tool is stupid. The technician must know what the limitations of the tool does. If the technician doesn't understand that the tool can give you false information in different scenarios, the technician will get bad information. Therefore, the technician will spit out bad information. Bad diagnostics too cost the customer money because we know when parts get changed because a technician did faulty procedures with good equipment and got a faulty uh, diagnosis and put in a good part on top of another good part and it still doesn't work. Uh, unfortunately, we know the customer gets charged for that and some elaborate story gets made up of why that part get need, needed to get replaced. That's just an unfortunate fact. So, just showing you, and actually in this picture right here, what can we see? Uh, that dark, right, right above my thumbnail right there, that's the compressor. And we can see the line up above there. It's a little bit cooler looking right now from this angle right now. And now it's, the refrigerant is out. This is explained. Now you see almost no color difference. Go back to the beginning of the video and you've seen there is like a blue shadow down here. That's all gone because all the refrigerant has been removed and it's exposed to the air and now these lower fins have all become ambient temperature and now where you see a little blue right here because that's thick heavy aluminum that got cooled down without fins on it exposed to the atmosphere and it has yet to rise to the regular temperature but over here where you have light mass very thin material with no more evaporating refrigerant in it it cannot drop the temperature, so therefore it all looks the same now. So compare the beginning to the end of the video to see the difference. And of course, I pulled the refrigerant out and I'm down to nearly a thousand microns right now. So that's it for this video, showing you how inaccurate a thermal thermometer or camera can be Oh, this one has an option. You can actually hook up right there, thermal couple. See that type K? That type K is the type K uh, thermistor that you see on the back of um, the S-Man 3 and the S-Man the, uh, the V model, what has the temperature probe. You could connect that right here and you can mechanically couple it to a line or you could put it in an air vent and get the correct temperature because even the manufacturer of flare knows they will give you the wrong temperature reading in some cir circumstances because of the different uh, reflectivity of certain materials and the angle at which you're projecting off of a off of a item. Uh, let's see, how can I explain this so maybe you understand? The stealth fighter jet, it's not all rounded. It has those sharp little triangles all over it. And the reason it has those tri triangles, I think any of us who are nerds and love military equipment know why a stealth jet has all these small triangles and nothing is smooth and long, nothing square. Because of all these small little angles will reflect and distribute the radar off of the surface in a matter of which it cannot read it accurately and give a uh, lock on to the target. Same thing with infrared light. Infrared radiation that radiates off of something strikes an object. If this was dead flat, you everybody knows how you can get a, a laser or a flashlight shine it into a mirror and make it come right back to you, right into your eyeball. Uh, don't do that with lasers. Um, okay, infrared light. I'm trying to take a temperature of this valve cover. This valve cover is a kid's fancy, shiny uh, valve cover. I wanna know the temperature of the engine or the manifold. And it is shiny, polished aluminum. And I'm using my camper, my infrared test, 
if there's a really hot item over here a foot away and it has direct line of eyesight contact and I'm over here with my thermal camera I'm trying to take the temperature of this surface right here the infrared radiation energy will reflect and hit come back up into the camera and give me the reading of a, a mixture of this and that and it'll see this as giving the wrong temperature so these are good for some things but not everything they're good for a general they're good for uh, comparing two like items at the same time but you have to know the limitations of your tool that's it see you guys later uh, this is replacing my older model uh, what was it the 163 uh, it got stolen from me and uh, so this is the newer one it has some better features than the older one but I see more of a camera lag its resolution even so it says like nine frame rates uh, refresh time a second I see more lag in this newer one than I did the older one but maybe I'm not doing something right. I got to read more on this, see some more usage, and I'm actually going to write a letter to tech support and ask them if what I'm seeing is correct or it's just a function of this unit over my last older version I had. Uh, but of course I like it. It's an excellent thing. What this is really good for, Mercedes Benz. All you guys who work on older Mercedes Benz, who had the heat control valve up there, that really big giant heater control valve up there that you know diverts heater control, and you guys are trying to diagnose it. If you wanna see that it's either blocking or letting any warm coolant going through it, you just hold this camera right up to it and you could diagnose it right away. That's all, see you guys later.